So today I want to show you my max out Etra and if she's still worth farming out for you guys. Spoiler alert, she's definitely still worth farming with some caveats. Since the new um, collaboration is coming out, the collaboration with Final Fantasy Tactics, that's the one that you want to start farming. But it starts in two days, so you, you basically still have about two days until um, this Etra event really is finished because you're not going to want to farm her. It's a waste of time after this, right? So I would at least limit break her until the event starts because um, once you um, limit break her, you can still awaken her later. And when you go to her quest, um, this quest right here, um, this level 50 job quest gives you about 30 or 40 shards every single day. And um, I would do that every day um, with the event still going on. So at least you can still limit break her um, to level 5. And then you could, if you want to awaken her later on, then you can. So that's pretty much it. If you want to see me review my Max Out Etra, then continue to follow along. So I fully awakened her and limit broken her. And this is what her stats kind of look like for now, since she's not level 99. And this has been a long, long four day grind to do all this. It's crazy. So her Master Ability Boxing Badge, um, it gives 260 HP, 3 agility, and 8 crit. And the nice thing about it is that if you do max her out, you can swap these trust master rewards to different characters, right? Her, so I maxed out all her jobs to level 12 except for the knight. But the knight one is the one that you want most because that's going to be her main role. Her main role is going to be like a tank and debuffer kind of role. And this is going to get important later raids when you have to, you know, start debuffing some of these monster bosses. So I still think she's worth maxing out. And you have the time and patience to farm her due to her ability sets. Um, so her monk ability has HP up level 1. But her knight ability has that also. So when you max both these out, she's going to she's gonna have a crazy amount of HP. And um, she's going to be a great tank and debuff her own. But for more in preparation, preparation for, but for me that's more in preparation for later raids. Um, she has a lot of debuff abilities like power break that does damage and lower attacks for three turns um, And speed speed break which do damage to targets within range and lowers agility for three turns Now this one is really important since um, when you're lowering agility you can lower um, like boss CT turns and their point CT turns and um, That's gonna give you more more um, more turns for your other characters but so as you can see, she has a lot of roles like um, that kind of just debuffs, like magic debuff, physical debuffs. Um, like I said, power break earlier, um, and I'm pretty sure she, yeah she has arm break, which disables somebody for three turns. So basically, you get like three free shots at a target, which is pretty crazy. So you could be constantly spamming these debuffs on future raids and slow these bosses down and get more turns, or keep other enemies at bay. And in PvP, she has, like I said, she has Arm Break, um, which disables somebody for three turns, but I'm not really sure how viable she is in PvP right now with the uh, Frederica meta right now. So I would recommend her using a P PvP. But I do recommend her maxing out her build, these abilities, or at least the HP up, both of them for the Knight one and for the Monk one. So definitely max those up, the Arm Break and the speed break so those are really the four ones that you want to um, start maxing out and you just use her um, on a specific situation and raids and future content so we talk about a lot about the night jobs which is her bread and butter but i would ignore her cleric skills which is subpar and i would just focus on her night abilities to cash to um, start cashing out on this debuffs on enemies and later content and then I would focus on our monk ability to revive. What was that revive? And then um, that's pretty much it. So those are like the four or five main things that I would focus on her to really utilize her. Um, countdown, which is a kind of interesting casting skill, which casts do my target, which I don't see as useful but fun to use. Um, I'm not sure if it works like the other versions where like, you know, you cast Doom on somebody and they die in three turns, 
but I wouldn't really, really worry about that. Um, she's really easy to limit break, like I said, and then waking her may be a challenge depending on your resources. If you're a free to play player, but you have to assess your situation. But so far, she's been doing pretty well for me. Um, and if you have the time to see it, I would definitely recommend getting so. To sum it up, if you have time and resources to farm her, I would definitely do it. Um, I can see her being very useful in raids and with our other abilities and being to disable targets and slow down the pace of the battle when the content gets a lot harder. Alright, so that's pretty much my review for her. Um, she's, I think she's definitely a great unit. So um, take care guys and see you in the next event and I'll probably release a um a video of me making um my plus five claw for her which I'm almost at plus four right now and I think I could get um plus five before this event ends so um I'll show you all that all right take care. <laughs>